Geronimo is one of the largest and most powerful yachts ever built. 110 feet long, she's built to handle the roughest conditions on the most remote seas on Earth. But when her skipper, Olivia de Corsasson, was racing her across the Atlantic in 2003, something dramatically slowed her from racing speed to almost a dead stop. I saw there was uh, some, a very big net was, uh, because of the, the speed has reduced from uh, 21 knots to 13, then to 11. De Corsasson sent his crew to investigate and his first mate returned with some very strange news. He said, come and see, because I, 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 am, I, I am really wondering about it. And I come and uh, I see about two arms that size, average. I mean, uh, yes, twice my, twice my arm with a big uh, circular things, you know, that they have, uh, that they have. And uh, it was grabbing the rudder. What de Corsasson claimed to see was a creature so rare and so strange it has only recently been photographed alive. Architeuthis, the giant squid. It was at the very border of, the, of a legend for me, and uh, since that day, not a legend anymore. It's just a, a, a goddamn shitty reality because uh, it's a lot of power. And the other problem is uh, the squid start to shake the boat. For centuries, sailors have told of sea monsters with massive tentacles. But it was only last year that scientists managed to photograph a living Architeuthis. These remarkable images, captured by a Japanese team, show an eight-metre giant squid, about the size of a bus, freeing itself from a hook before returning to the depths. But still, no one has captured a giant squid alive. Yeah, no, she's in good nick. At Auckland's University of Technology, internationally renowned squid expert Dr. Well, Steve O'Shea has studied giant leaves. squid washed up on beaches <laughs> and caught in fishing trawls. This would be my 122nd giant squid that I've handled. Well, this particular squid, a fully mature female, probably coming in at around about 250 kilograms, caught in a hokey trawl. Today, they're preserving the animal for New Zealand's natural history collection. Deep down in here, and extending right up into the base of the head is the digestive gland. More often than not, that will rupture. And if that ruptures when we're moving it, we're in big trouble. Really, this I mean, was caught for at that. a depth of 500 stuck in metres. Here in the, base of the, arms, the massive change in beaks. pressure meant that the animal, now, like all the others caught by only just see was see dead by the time Great it reached stomach. the surface. That's the lower beak overlapping the upper. You can see. Why don't we give it a move? Mm. Yep. This is going to be quite tricky, because um, I don't really fancy having 250 kilograms of squid falling on me. Steve O'Shea has dedicated his life to the same giant squid. So many tanks here, I get confused sometimes. This is like a treasure trove in here, isn't it? Like, this almost looks like a Humboldt. I didn't know we had anything like that. This is just absolutely monstrous. Where on earth does this come from? we really got to find, I'm talking about this huge squid, you've got it. Dr O'Shea and published his side, first scientific paper at 15. Larger, 30 years later, he's animals, still dazzled by the creatures he studies look. and shocked by how little we know about them. Hey, look at the size of this puppy. Now, this is probably one of the largest of these ones ever. So you've got a fully mature female giant squid of 13 metres in total length. That's actually grown from 2 millimetres to 13 metres in one and a half years, to the best of our knowledge. Here Steve's we go. dream has always been is, to study living architecture. This is an animal. And seven it's called years ago, he hatched an improbable plan. So what we're trying to do is to capture the juveniles and then on grow them, feed them as much food as we can, and determine exactly how long they are, exactly what is their growth rate. Try to reconstruct the life cycle of this giant squid. The radical idea was not to look for mature squid, which live in the deepest oceans, but to search for baby giant squid, which live in surface waters. Then he could feed the juveniles no more than a few metres long until they reached giant size. When we first started this, we didn't even know what it was. 
We were told that it was impossible to keep squid alive in captivity, deep sea species of squid. I didn't know that. Well, I didn't believe that. And the longest anyone of Off the coast of New Zealand, scientists embark on an incredible journey. In a very high profile expedition funded by the Discovery Channel, Dr. O'Shea spent a month at sea searching for these juveniles. Now, we found out where the juvenile giant squid live in the very surface layers. We realised that the squid are coming into New Zealand waters to breed. We just put our nets in the water at a time and a place when the eggs would be hatching. We got 17 of them. So what we've got in here, we've got two larval archetuthis. One of them is going to swim right around. Here he goes, right there. That's the healthiest one that we've had so far. For Steve O'Shea, this moment was a long time coming. But his euphoria was short-lived. Here the pictures of the juveniles in the documentary are rectangular tanks in the main. Here, when the juveniles were placed in the special tanks, disaster struck. But what we've found out since, well it was pretty obvious, you put your juvenile giant squid, which has cost an astronomical sum of money, into a rectangular tank and it goes straight to the bottom of the tank and it's upside down and it's dead within 13 seconds. If you take that animal out and you put it into a cylindrical tank, about 30 seconds later it's happily swimming around. So we killed them with our tanks, then we put them into polyethylene tanks. Polyethylene kills squid. In fact, we basically did everything wrong. And then got a All of Steve's Architeuthis died. A couple of years it took me to get over that, because having invested two years in something, um, and then to have someone throw a camera in front of you when they've died, you feel pretty bad. It took me two years to get over it. And then I pulled myself together again, and uh, went and got this boat and now spend a fantastic amount of time out at sea trying to capture that juvenile giant all over again. So we're just going to dart straight over there. Now it will get a little bit stroppy in the middle of the harbour, but we'll try and find some nice sheltered water for you. So here goes. The money for Steve's big expeditions has now dried up but he still spends about 300 days a year out in his boat, mostly alone, continuing his search for juvenile giant squid. Well, this is when I bust my foo-foo valve and I lift this big old net. My good old trusty nets caught many a giant squid in its time. Baby version. Without a large research vessel, and... the chance of Steve Ooh, catching a juvenile giant is pretty slim. Now you're all hoping that I've got a a giant squid in here, aren't you? I'm hoping I've still got the end of the net. <laughs> and this is what you catch. Look at this bloody jellyfish. Dang. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before. Sometimes you can put the net out, particularly at night, and it comes up glowing. It's, it's really quite, you know, if, when you're out here by yourself at night, quite romantic, you know. The net comes up glowing, nobody there to appreciate it. No, I thought we had something. And I'd like to be able to show you a live squid while we're out here. You know, I'm supposed to be the squid hunter, aren't I? And I can't even catch one of the things. It's a bit embarrassing, really. I often do think about chucking all of this in. And uh, just sitting on back in the office doing my own research. But um, there's a lot of pressure on us to actually go out and catch this animal. And until someone else does it, I'm going to continue doing it myself. So no, I can't chuck it in just yet. In the seven years Four Dr. O'Shea searched for giant squid, he's become aware of a disturbing trend. Squid are incredibly good barometers of environmental health. And if I go back maybe 10 years, I had 23 giant squid in one year. That's how many were caught. That was the intensity of fishing around New Zealand. And then it tailed right down to about one a year. So, we sucked a kuma on that one, I'm afraid. Ooh, arr! Uh, no squid in there. Dr. O'Shea believes the decline in giant squid numbers is due to a new, aggressive form of deep sea fishing practiced in New Zealand. With the coastal seafood stocks exhausted, fishermen are turning to bottom trawling, where nets weighted with steel rollers are dragged along the deepest ocean floors. In 
the process of doing so, they wipe out centuries-old coral communities, myriad other invertebrate bits and pieces, and exhausted the fish stocks. And what we've seen in New Zealand is that we've systematically trawled the sea floor everywhere. And now there are no fish left in New Zealand waters. So what we're doing is we're moving into international waters. So basically between New Zealand and Australia, what we're left with on the seafloor down to depths of about 1,200 metres is a barren wasteland. This is so beautiful where we are now, but you think that the oceans are fine, but they're not. There are no fish here at all. It's been fished out. We can't even catch a fish today. Dr O'Shea is becoming increasingly no, worried not. that bottom trawling may cause the extinction of many deep sea creatures before we even know they exist. There's plenty of other things that we can uh, focus our energies on that are probably far more important, catching and growing up giant squid. Conservation first and foremost is what I do do. And we just use this squid and the public's insatiable appetite to learn more about the squid as a hook to draw them into far more important matters like conservation. Because at the rate we're going, we're not going to have giant squid in 10 years. We've already had about five extinctions of squid and octopus in New Zealand waters already. That's a direct consequence of fishing activity. And these bloody great big nets are doing a very good job wiping out the giant squid as well.